In this set of videos, I want to go through a marginal cost of capital problem. This is something that will take a little while to work through, so it'll probably be broken down into at least two videos. But the starting point is our data set. Marginal cost of capital tells us how much the company is spending for each dollar of financing it's using. And in a typical multi marginal cost of capital problem that you'll see in this class, we'll be presented with book values of debt, preferred stock, and common stock. Market values of debt, preferred stock, and common stock. Now, there are two ways that I typically present market values. One is like I do here, where I just flat out give you the market value. The other common technique that I will use is to give you the number of shares of preferred stock, number of shares of common stock, and number of bonds outstanding, as well as the value of each share of common stock, preferred, and bond. Then to get the market value, just take the number of shares outstanding, times the value of each share, and that gives you the total market value for each component. We also will typically have both the coupon rate and yield to maturity on debt. Sometimes I will require you to calculate the yield to maturity. Other times I'll just give it flat out. Marginal tax rate, the dividend rate on preferred stock, and par value of preferred stock. Sometimes I'll just give you the dividend for preferred stock, but here in this example, we're going to have to calculate that. We've got the current price of preferred, the current dividend on common stock. I may either give the current dividend, which is D0, or I might give the forecasted dividend, which is D1. So be careful on that. Make sure you read which dividend is presented. Next, we have the growth rate on dividends, which is 4%. Note that preferred stock does not grow, so this refers to common stock dividend growth rates. Current price of the common stock, $30.45. The 10-year treasury yield, which we'll use as the risk-free rate of interest. Sometimes that may just be given as the risk-free rate, or just given as a treasury yield, but the 10-year treasury yield is what's typically used for the risk-free rate. Beta is 1.60. And then we have the expected return on the market and the risk premium for stocks versus bonds. That's all the information that we're going to need in order to work through the marginal cost of capital in our example. First thing we have to do is solve for the market value weights. Weights refer to proportions of financing coming from each source. So we want to know what percentage of financing is coming from debt or bonds what percentage of financing is coming from preferred stock, and what percentage of financing is coming from common stock. Now when we look at calculating weights, we want to focus on market values, not book values. So when we look at this data set, the book values become meaningless. We can cross those out. We want to focus on the market values. The only reason book values are provided is to make sure you know which one you want to use in the problem. And we want to use market values. So we have the market value of debt, which are our bonds. Market value of preferred. And the market value of common. Market value of our debt is $27 million. Market value of preferred was 18 million. Market value of common was 76 million. So I'm just going to write those numbers down. And now we want to total them up. So we want a total market value. going to be the 27 million plus 18 million plus 76 million is going to give us 121 million. So our firm is using a total of 121 million dollars in financing. Now the weight is just going to be the 27 million divided by 120 million. So we take the 27 divided by 121 
and we get a weight of debt of 0.22. You can just carry this out to two decimal places is fine for the weight. Weight of preferred is going to be 18 million divided by the 121 million gives us a weight of 0.15 and lastly we want the weight of common which is going to be the 76 million divided by 121 that gives us a weight of 0.63 Now note that your weights should add up to 1.22 plus 0.15 plus 0.63. It's going to add up to 1. If they add up to 0.99 or 1.01, don't worry about it. It's just a rounding error. But if you get something significantly different from 1, double check your calculations. You probably pressed a button wrong when you were doing your calculations on your calculator. Then we want to solve for the after-tax cost of debt. After-tax cost of debt just equal to the yield to maturity times 1 minus the tax rate. We always want to make sure we're using the yield to maturity, not the coupon rate on the debt. So we're going to cross that out. We don't want that. We want the 7.8% yield to maturity because that represents the expected rate of return to investors. And from the company's perspective, it's the cost of financing in issuing debt. Now interest expense is a pre-tax expense so every dollar we pay in interest lowers our taxes so we actually save a little bit of tax money by paying interest. So every dollar we pay in taxes means less in interest. Since our marginal tax rate is 34 percent what that means is every dollar we pay in interest means we save 34 cents in taxes. So our net cost is only 66 cents. So we want to take that into account by yield to maturity times one minus the tax rate. So we now have the 7.8% times 0.66. Make sure that your tax rate is in decimal format there. 7.8 times 0.66 gives us an after-tax cost of debt of 5.15%. We'll stop in this video and pick up the rest of the steps to this problem in our next video.